Oi, gamers! Wow, no, correct. I wasn't ready. <laughs> You're right. Hello, hello, Brobs! Oh my Welcome goodness. to Games and Feelings, an advice <laughs> show about playing games, being human, and dealing with the fact that those games will involve other humans. I am Eric Silver, your question keeper, and yes, the farthest are. that I've ever brought a game system is the GameCube that I used to hook up in the back of my old SUV, nice. the like the screen came down uh -huh, and uh -huh. there was like the red, yellow, black plugs. Decent. So I could play Super Smash Bros. in the back. Mm -hmm. And I brought that all the way up to Toronto from the United States from oh, like nice. NYC. So that was really good. Hey Jasper Cartwright, whose house Hi. I'm in right now. Hi. And I also brought my Nintendo Switch Lite this far. So that's actually, also pretty good. That's probably far, it's probably farther, but I didn't want to say that one until right now. <laughs> Jasper, what about you? What's the farthest you've ever brought a game console? Uh, Australia, for sure. I took a... What did I take to Australia? A Game Boy of some description? I can't remember which exactly version, but it would have been a Game Boy. Probably. Was there color on it? Yes, yes, <laughs> okay. yes, 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 yes. It was like at least an SP, if not more recent. Oh, than sure. That. Like it was, it wasn't so, it was like around 15, yeah, about 15 years ago, I think. All right. Did so, it have the capability for three-dimensional play? I was just playing Pokemon, so no. Okay. <laughs> That's fine, though. I mean, uh, first, yeah. I figured when I put this question together, you we were going to say something that was mobile. Yeah. But I do like the idea. I'm trying to think if I've taken my, like, I might have taken my PlayStation somewhere. Because that's where more would, impressive. Yeah, where would, I have, where would I have taken my PlayStation to? I mean, I've booted that up and down the country because I tour when I went on tour uh, with the theater show that I did. I I, still, I learned about this everywhere. Jasper was the horse in War Horse. <laughs> I was not the horse, but I did ride the horse. <laughs> and and then in the second half, I got to be the, uh, like a very injured dead horse. Oh no! Nice. After my character had unfortunately met a demise. Okay. Spoilers for War Horse. Apologies, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, he's like for the war that the he, horse was in. He, yeah, yeah, he's cut from the movie, so don't worry about it. You're not gonna get any spoilers. Um, uh, yeah, after he died, I came back as this like just pale, sickly horse, uh, yeah. and uh, that was fun. So I did get to do that. To be fair, and you needed to play like FIFA 2010 to like yes. get get the vibes out. It was uh, 2018. That would have been FIFA. Yeah. FIFA but you could have not gotten more FIFA. You could have just kept FIFA 10. I could have done, yeah. but it would have sucked, and I wouldn't have had the most recent players. <laughs> That's a good point. That's I wouldn't have had the most recent players. I had FIFA 04 on my GameCube, oh, and I played four. it a lot oh, four. into the future. What's hilarious as well is like 04 would have effectively been like FIFA, on like GameCube, would have been like yeah. FIFA 99. Yeah, oh, like, in terms of like the quality, like, like I, I love Nintendo so much, but whenever they release a FIFA on like the Switch or whatever, I'm just like, oh, this like it literally looks like an early like PS1 game. <laughs> like, yeah. It looks so bad. Like they just didn't try at all to pour it over. So because we're doing this in person, Jasper's mm. had his hand on my shoulder, telling me <laughs> barreling <laughs> FIFA information into my eyes. Yeah, we've actually we've just cut about 25 minutes. Of <laughs> Of me talking about FIFA from this episode. Uh, <laughs> well, I am in person in Jasper's house because we're doing the Manchester live show tomorrow. Heck yeah. And I'm sure by the time when this comes out, I'm sure that you'll know mm. the, how incredible it was that the Queen came to the, the show. Which, honestly, given the fact that she'd passed away like a year ago, a really impressive. <laughs> really <laughs> yeah. impressive. That's how good, that's how much pull That's how much pull had. you have, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure it was incredible. Thank you, everyone, who came out. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm having fun in the UK. This is my first time here. It was, honestly, it's such a genuine honor to be like, this is your first taste of the UK. Uh, I was just like looking around. I was like, wow, it's all. And, Jay and your wife, Jade, is just like, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> great, great impression of my wife. Yeah. I honestly thought she was in the room for a second. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And then, like, I slept 12 hours. Amanda and I you slept did. 12 hours you in a row. so long. It was great. I was pretty happy for you, though, because last night you were tired, boy. Like, I get it. It's, in, in a I, good way, though. It, it, the funniest thing is, okay, everyone who's listening, I need you to understand something. Eric was convinced <laughs> that the jet lag this way is fine. It's so easy. It's not a I'm problem. I'm bad going the other way. That's <laughs> yeah, what yeah, I'm true. saying. Oh, okay. So, how I don't, I wanted to see how bad you were going. Like, you were very tired last night, which is fine. Yes. I would have been a, well, the I reason been why waste. we did it like this, the reason why we did it like this is to defeat the jet lag by just being regular tired. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We took a red eye flight. Yeah. And we slept okay. Yeah. We got at least four hours of sleep. Which so like honestly, very good. Really impressive for us. And point. we're not like, oh my God, I can sleep on any plane. I'm so great. Yeah. My life. I'm 
God's blessed child. Like, that's not it. <laughs> that's so, the definition of God's blessed child is that you can sleep on a plane. <laughs> I think so. I think that's what the that's what the church was talking about. <laughs> that's why they took down Jesus. He was too good at sleeping on a plane. He was too good at sleeping on a plane. Too good at sleeping on a plane. That's what he did for those three days. Yeah, he, was he, he was asleep. He was asleep on a plane. Yeah. yeah. What a miracle. So we took the red eye and we slept okay. Mm. And then, of course, like, there was the three hour journey to Manchester from London, yep. which was great. And Jasper picked us up, which was incredible. Um, and of course, we went to like a a service station yes, on the side of the services. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And we, I was just like, oh man, look at all the stuff. And then a random guy turned around and was like, you're not from here then. And I'm like, <laughs> leave me alone. Stop. <laughs> they were from the south though, so they weren't as nice as you would. Uh, people up north would be like genuinely intrigued as to where you were from. And I was just excited. Just like, what are you? I was trying to explain that like I'm really interested in regional fast food, so going yes. to a new country yeah. is extra fun. There was a teriyaki KFC chicken sandwich. Yeah, there is. The point is, is that basically. <laughs> I was, in, I was in high energy. Amanda's was like walking along. And then we got to your house by mm-hmm. two. We hung out. I fell asleep on a rug. On a in, rug. It's a, to me, it's okay, a great to rug. Me, I need to clarify for everyone. It is a the comfiest rug. Yeah. It is like so uber fluffy. But I was like up and at them. And then yeah. we went to a pub. Yes, and I got a steak and ale pie. Yes. And I drank a big beer. Yeah. And then I'm just like... I, you drank a, you drank a normal sized light beer. Is just to clarify, <laughs> it was fine. It was fine. It was don't great. Try, don't try and pass off this as some big giant beer. You had no, no, no. You had a light. You had a light. It was pint. a boot. I drank it out of someone's boot, and it was incredible. <laughs> and then by the time that that like, and I had just not eaten all yeah, day because yeah, yeah, of the yeah, weird. Yeah. They kept shoving and food pie, in my face on the international pies, flight. Like savory pie is a particular like like British savory pie is a particularly yeah. tiring. F- like you eat it and you immediately. Like, oh, I need a nap now. Yeah. Like, it's heavy. You know what I mean? It's not a light food. <laughs> but I was ready for it. I wanted to do it. And then I immediately fell asleep in the car. And while we were driving, like, past the castle. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm just like, I have to go to bed. I know it's nine. It's fine. But this is good. Because no, no, then I'll good. just sleep. And then today, bam. You're for 12 up. hours. I slept for 12, 12 hours. hours. 12 hours. Which is wild. I don't think I've ever done that in my entire life. Well, hey, look, you're welcome. It's what a, what a lovely, little, lovely little thing for you. A little, little adventure. I'm excited. Right. Okay. But what we are going to do, because the game oh, that is giving me yeah. feelings is the game of being awake in the UK and yep. eating food here. Okay. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm stealing the mic from you Please. because I need to explain what's going on. So we have uh, three things to try, which is one of which I haven't tried, one of which I won't be trying, and the other which I have had loads of times, but I will trying it again because they're the best. Mm. Uh, so we have a chocolate hobnob. Mm. Uh, for any of you that don't know, a chocolate hobnob is a is an oat based biscuit. Now <laughs> I need to clarify what a biscuit is because we had this discussion <laughs> That's last night. That's how you have to clarify it. So a biscuit is is the hard sweet treat. Uh, it's like a firm uh, uh, sweet treat, and it is oh my god, uh, hobnobs are so so good. I'm like literally been eyeballing this hobnob the whole. You can have one too. We have the whole package. Oh, well, I'm going to. Don't worry. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to. Um, It's what we might be calling a cookie. They're absolutely fine. Yes, they'd be a cookie. But um, uh, so we're going to have a a hobnob. Then we've got some Guinness, but we don't just have Guinness. We have cold brew Guinness. I feel like this is almost like our gateway. This is like a weird hybrid of the two places. It's like we're getting a a, a little bit of UK and then we're now also going to get, I mean, actually, to be fair, some Irish people are going to be, take some major exception to me saying UK in reference to Guinness. So We will discuss this. We will. But I I saw it in the grocery store and I'm like, Jasper, we're getting this. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. And so I haven't tried this either, so I will also be partaking this. Maybe we'll do that one last because that will cleanse palates uh, after you've tried this, which is the first First thing I'm going to try, and you have to take a big old mouthful. I'm going to. Uh, uh, Eric is going to be trying Marmite for the first time. On toast. Uh, Marmite on toast. (laughs) This, for everyone at home, is as far as I'm concerned, the devil's sauce. It is <laughs> absolutely sauce. disgusting. It is ye- brown yeast spread, mm. Mm. and it is vile. It smells bad, it tastes <laughs> bad, and the tagline for it is very apt, which is, you either love it or you hate it. And it's very true. You either It is either like an immediately jarring and horrendous taste, mm. or you're like, oh my god, this is delicious. So, Eric... Are you, are you excited to enter the flavor zone? 
<laughs> I am. The funny thing about this is also bad. <laughs> Jasper prepared the Marmite and Toast, and also there are now strawberries on the plate. Yeah, that was actually, like, that Jasper, was actually Amanda, had strawberries. That was actually Amanda's idea, because she wanted you to make sure that you had something to cleanse your palate <laughs> after you tried the Marmite, because she's pretty <laughs> convinced that you're going to hate this. Yeah, I, I'm interested. I'm certainly interested. So okay, the way on. that we're going to do this is that we're going to describe the thing yep, a little bit visually, because this is a podcast. This is a podcast. Then I have a scale system. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, we're going to mm-hmm. do one out of ten on taste. Yep. One out of ten on how British it is. Sure. Uh, and then one out of ten on enjoyment that this is happening. Yeah. Okay. Just generally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I can tell you. It'll mostly be for me, but we'll we'll do we, together. I can already tell you. I'm going to give you my predictions for okay. what you're going to go for. This is going to be this is going to be a one ten uh, zero. Okay. <laughs> the Marmite <laughs> is a one ten zero on that scale. Got it. Hobnobs will be a ten ten. 12. Okay. And then this, truly no idea. This I'm interested. I'm really card. excited. The Guinness is a wild card because I don't know okay. what the cold brew added to the Guinness is going to be like. Oh yeah. boy, here we go. Okay, so big I have the mouthful, Marmite. Big mouthful. Oh, I know. A, a good healthy chew. There, I, so the piece of toast is about the size of my hand. There's mm-hmm. a lot of Marmite on it. Again, Marmite is this brown you have to be generous. sauce. You have to be generous with Marmite. Yeah. That's the point. Uh, give it, if you could give me a good sniff, please. It smells fine. Oh, okay. We might be we might be okay because that's normally like the. It's part. a little pungent. Yeah. Yo, we yeah, we yeah. It's pungent. It's but, pungent. But it doesn't. It's not too strange. Okay. okay. So now I'm gonna take a bite of the marmite. Okay. Maybe Mario's gonna like you. Marmite. You're warning me like, it's like I'm, hey, why did you eat this poisonous animal? Truly, that I fed this, you? honestly, this is that's how I feel about the taste of marmite. Okay, you it's ready? Vile. <laughs> right. oh, that was a big one. <laughs> that was such a big bite. It tastes salty. Oh, I think you like it, don't you? It's like, there's a lot going on. It's weird. <laughs> it's really weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so many flavors. So I don't like it, right? Uh-huh. But I don't dislike it. Wow. It's really you salty. You might be the first person in the human history that doesn't either love or hate Marmite. I don't, I don't like it. Like, I wouldn't have it again, <laughs> but I'm not, yeah, like, gross. pissed. I'm it's not gross. pissed. It's gross. I don't know why someone would do this willingly. Right? <laughs> but I, like, I feel like I'm missing... The thing it should be like I, I'm, mis- nope, I'm missing anything. the thing that I the ingredient that Marmite on toast should also have because I feel like if you told me like oh yeah it's Marmite and jelly on toast no. the Marmite is just salty it's yeah. just very very salty and I I don't know why I would just have that as my thing that is exclusively what you're supposed to have that that's it that's the extent of it we don't do we don't do the mixing of the devil sauce with but, anything. Uh, you guys have like, yeah, you put butter on and whatever together. Yeah, but, but like, it's pretty much like in England, I would say it's like, it's, like, it's butter and a th- and one thing. You don't right. really. Well, that's what I was thinking, butter make, and Marmite. Yeah, 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 sure. So that's butter and Marmite. Because it's not even like there's no fat. There's no other mm. taste other than salty. And then there's like some weird funk in there. Oh, it's, yeah, extreme funk. It's, I'm there, I'm like, oh, blue cheese is like the thing that I'm getting. I'm getting the funk. Wow, that is so far away from what I taste when I taste that. When I, I mean, taste that, it. when I taste that, I feel like I've licked the bottom of someone's foot. I'm getting that vibe. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, that's like genuine, like, and like, but like, it's like a rough foot. It's not like a smooth, it's like, it's like I've just licked the sole of someone's foot who've been walking around barefoot for a while. <laughs> I get, here's the thing, I get that. Sure. I, I can sure. see how someone would think that. Sure. I don't hate it. Okay. Okay. But I wouldn't have it again. Well, I would not willingly have it. If someone offered this to me, I'd be like, nah. Yeah, I'm good. Thank no. you. I'm good. Okay. Uh, out of 10, please, for taste. I'm going to go with a five. Wow. I know that that's exactly the opposite of what you've just said well, everyone's well, like. Quite. If you just said a 10, I'd have, been, I'd have walked out of the room, honestly. No, it's certainly a five. Okay, it's, five. It, I don't hate it, mm-hmm. but I'm struggling to find why people like this. Yeah, fine. For Absolutely sure. fine. Uh Britishness. This feels like a 10, right? Yeah. This is extremely bland. Yeah. Salt is the only seasoning. Yeah. Uh, Am, is this different than Vegemite? Because I know that's Australian. Yeah, no, it's slightly different, but like essentially the same thing. Like okay, essentially okay. it's the same the, the, the same concept. For sure. And then ex- enjoyment, this is happening 10. I'm, 10. I'm like that. Okay. I'm doing this with Jasper. It's okay, fun. great. It's fun. Uh, do we want to do, do, do Guinness or Hobnobs? I'm having a strawberry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to do uh, Guinness or Hobnob? Let's do the Guinness, Guinness because this Guinness. is the thing I'm most excited about. Okay. So you should be most excited about the Hobnob, though. I need to let you know that you should be most excited. About I mean, that. I could already guess it's probably very good. It's extremely, <laughs> it's very good. good. It's extremely good. Extremely good. So we saw this. I for I like beer. I like weird beer. I think that I've had coffee related things because you know in the hard seltzer yeah. craze, yeah. they were like every single pe- person was like, "I'm going to make this." Here. 
that and orange stuff over here like everything oh, sure. is orange flavored at the moment like every every single chocolate bar is bringing out like an orange version of a chocolate bar mm, um, okay so i i've had coffee hard ice coffee before mm-hmm. like you know they just make it in cans pbr had one a little while ago which was super sure. weird but that was more of like a malt beverage yeah but i was interested because i love guinness yeah a man and i are going to the guinness factory you are indeed. because we're going to dublin right after we go to manchester mm-hmm. so i'm very stoked i love guinness and i think it might actually be good with Iced coffee. I've made stout and iced coffee like yeah. cocktail drinks before. So I'm going to tell you what I think. Sure. I think this is not going to be coffee y enough. Okay. Because that's usually my complaint with flavored stuff, right? Yeah. Is that like there's not enough of the other flavor. Like when I like orange stuff, it's like when there's like a, oh, I can really genuinely taste orange. Sure. I don't like a hint of orange because that just feels like, oh, what's that? Mm, there's something, mm, mm, no, I need, I need more of whatever. <laughs> Wait, what was that? What was that? Uh, uh, See your this face is, this while is, you this do is this. Is on, this is on camera. It's this great. is on camera. There's nothing. Mm, 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 wow, I need more of this. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, so, and we should cut that out. I'm going to make that my ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> God, please, no. So I think this is not going to taste enough like coffee for me. Okay. Like, I think I would like it if it, if this was like almost like a 50 50 of like Guinness and coffee, I yeah. feel like I'd probably love this. That now makes me want to make that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's like, I let's just get I want to make that uh, separately. Yeah. So let's try. I just wonder if the Guinness is going to taste better that it didn't travel as far. That's what I'm also excited about. Like, I, 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 we got it from a can, but in, still. In, in, I've reliably told by many, many people, I haven't actually been to Dublin, but I've reliably told by many, many people that the Guinness in. Dublin is infinitely better. Well, that's true. I meant this, yeah. that it only traveled oh, like a I, little I, bit. I don't know. This is still Canada. It's, it's the same, same deal. All right, here okay, we here we go. That tastes more like cold brew than I thought it would be. Yeah, actually. Yeah, that's not that's not bad. Mm. I think it's actually Guinness mixed with cold brew. That's what I'm saying. That, yeah. That's what I was excited about. Yeah. Okay. But it does the thing that all of these things are, is that like, wow, this Guinness is too thin. Yeah. It's like, why is this Guinness so thin? Yeah, yeah. This is thin Guinness for sure. Okay, so I'm actually, uh, would you now would you say it's thinnest? Thin, oh, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> so thinnest it is, yeah. Thinnest it's it pretty is. thinnest. Thinnest it is. Um, I, I, yeah, okay, that's fine. The coffee yeah. balance is okay. I think it would taste better if I just mixed a coffee. If I put, do you know what actually I want? I want mm. two shots of espresso in a Guinness. That's what I want. That sounds cool. That's the balance that yeah. I want. Like put a little bit of whiskey or is, Bailey's in it too. Like the espresso. Yeah is so strong that I feel like it would cut through quite well. Yeah. Now um, I want to make like a frappe with like mm. alcohol, an alcoholic one with like in the new, you know, you put whipped cream on top. That's not bad. It just very much falls into the category of like, I would choose a, a normal Guinness over this every time. For sure. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't, it's not adding enough to the Guinness for me to be like, boom, oh, new favorite drink. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I am crushing I'm Guinness crushing, coffee beers. But it's, but it's a fun, it's a fun enough thing to be like, hey, I'm going over to a friend's house. What am I going to take? Oh, you know what? I'm going to take a four pack of Guinness cold brew because it's kind of a bit kooky and fun and well, you right. know what it's I mean? Not, but it's, it's not like, like you show up with like Malibu. It's like, look at this coconut yeah. vodka. Yeah, it's yeah, a little yeah. too it's, tame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But sure. I think like it's tame enough if you're like going to someone's house where you're like, oh, it's a fun night. It's like a themed thing or something. I don't want to just, just bring something that I enjoy. You know, yeah. like, just, I'm just going to bring a four pack of Guinness because like going to like a themed night and bringing a bring four, pack, a four of Guinness pack of Guinness is insane. <laughs> hey, all your like, beer is shite. I'm bringing my yeah, own. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's effectively what you're saying. You're just yeah. saying like, no, no, I only drink stout uh, or like ale. And you never bring it any for me. So I'm going to have to bring it. So my I'm own. bringing my 100%. own. Whereas a bit like this is like, oh, hey, like I, thought, I saw this. And I thought we'd try it. Yeah. So uh, fine. It's all right, fine. Jasper. So let's do one out, of, one out of 10. What's your taste? Taste. I'm going to go with a... I'll go with a seven. I will also go with a seven. seven. I think seven feels fair. Like I'm not, I'm definitely enjoying it. I just would choose to have a regular beer or a regular Guinness. Absolutely. So Britishness, what would you think of this? Britishness. Oh, I'm going to give this a 10 because this is like all we're obsessed with at the moment. It's like taking stuff that we love and being like, oh, let's smush it with something else. You know what I mean? Like we have, there's like biscuit flavored beers now. Um, Again, clarification, biscuits, cookie, like cookie flavored beers. You know what I mean? That's cool. No, I also think it's 10. I'm also going to say for a different reason, obviously, because you love taking Irish stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Pretending it's ours. Yeah. But the thing that I was trying to wrap my mind around is like, when would I drink this? It's like, oh, I'm going to drink this at 10 in the morning. Yeah. yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. feels pretty British. Well, that. 
I, that I will say, actually, this maybe this is maybe they're onto something. I feel like this would crush in America for like new fans of like the Premier League going mm. going to a to a sports bar at 10 a.m. because you have to watch your the, the football at stupid o'clock in yeah. America because I'm so sorry. The time difference means that you have to get up and super, super early. And hey, watch we're it. seeing this from the Women's World Cup, even though it's in Australia, they are catering a lot of hey, stuff well, to that's us. What, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I'm thinking Women's World Cup is on Sunday. Yeah. I'm thinking we save at least two of these and drink it then and we have we have a like one of these in the morning a hundred percent this is nice that's what i thought it was for this that is feels nice. very british to me so i'm saying actually i'm actually going to lower the british score oh. to five but i'm going to give it a five american score as well wow so i combined 10 because i think that this is actually this is a great export for the u.s hell yeah premier league fans in the u.s get yourself some guinness cold brew nothing's going to go down better at like 6 a.m. when you have to wake up and watch I the need to see league. the marketing. I need to see like the commercial for this and be like, get, it, get in touch. It's all about like I'll Americans like coming. It's like, wow, I'm so excited to watch Man City do my thing, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it's like, oh, I'm so tired. But that, I wish, give I, could, me a but I, wish I could have a drink. Yeah. But drink's going to make me more tired. Enter Guinness Cold Brew. You know what I mean? It's there. It's right there. Get in contact, Guinness. I'll run that. I will make the ad for you. And then Jasper, enjoyment that this is happening. Oh, John, this is happening 12. This is great. 12. 100%. I'm having a great time. All right. I'm uh, recording a podcast for the first ever time at my house. Hell yeah, dude. This is like one of my, this is like the third time I've ever recorded a thing. You going back into Just the mind? You, you are a star. I don't, I don't know if we, okay. Enjoyment is dropping. It's now a, n- a nine. <laughs> It's worse because it's been yeah, out. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's, it's, bad. Been, it's out because it's, it's been out. Bad, it's bad. It's yeah. bad. It's not a nice taste. It's not I was nice trying taste. to do a bit and have more of the bar, but it's bad. <laughs> we have to try these. Try these biscuits. Okay. okay. So biscuits. Uh, we have a sort of a dappled, marbly effect on the bottom, which is where you can see oats. Uh, oh yeah, that's the, oat the, the oats and everything mixed in. Now I'll clar- clarify for you. Hobnobs are the perfect dunking biscuit. Okay. Basically, they're very absorbent. They don't last very long. You can't dunk them for too long. Sure. But what they do is they suck up. Up the drink real good and then you can bam straight in your mouth it melts the chocolate on top it's a perfect like that's exactly why you want a chocolate biscuit for dunking as well yeah because you get that melted chocolate on top so i can the, i say the, one more thing about the marmite no, i'm no, now please. thinking about it mm-hmm. it does feel like i licked someone who just went on a workout perfect there you and go. i'm now understanding that yeah, 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 yeah. see see you're getting that you're really, okay hold on i'm sorry yeah, sorry yeah, i just yeah, got distracted yeah, yeah. yeah no no i get that i get that i get that that's 100 percent what it is it's like oh oh let me hey you just you just did a forty five minute hit workout. Mm-hmm. Let me let me get your armpit. Let me just grab your armpit. That's hundred percent what it tastes like. I'm mm-hmm. dropping it to the three. It's a three. Mm-hmm. It's a three. That's a good musk. Yeah, it's a good musk you got there. <laughs> oh, sorry. This is marmite you spread on your armpits. Oh, okay. Oh, same thing. Oh, it's not even on your armpits. This, it's on this, toast. This okay, tastes, great. This, this, got it. This tastes exactly the same. That's Why did you hide it in your shirt? <laughs> Why did you give it to me like that? That's weird. Hey, Jasper, what, stop what making we, me lick your armpits. It's what we British people do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just, hobnob. Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah, and then there's a layer of chocolate on top. It's enrobed with chocolate. It's enrobed. Mm. Oh, okay. So, I actually want to hop right to the Britishness, mm-hmm. because I think we can kind of assume what the taste yeah. is, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. But the Britishness of having an oat cookie, <laughs> an oat biscuit, and I, but it's one of these things when, I, which makes me feel like a boorish American, mm-hmm. where I'm like, oh, this cookie's pretty good. And then you're like, first of all, it's a biscuit. <laughs> and second of all, <laughs> you, you're not probably having it until you put it in a cuppa and you let it suck up. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like I'm missing something yeah, by not for having sure, the, for sure. yeah, the yeah, tea. Yeah. When you have your next cup of tea, we'll save some of these. You can have a dunk because yeah. it's a whole nother level. You know what I mean? It like un- really unlocks the chocolate flavor. It's yeah. like... And you were saying that you can dunk it in coffee, but yeah, again, oh, I do. I, I can pretty, feel I pretty like exclu- I pretty much exclusively dunk in coffee. But that's because that's what I would drinker. do though. But I can feel that it's supposed to be with like black tea. Like I, I, I feel honestly, like, genuinely, either I think is just as good. It's it's all about the flavor that you want, like the combination the, the oat, of flavor. The oat with the tea. It's like if this was like a from what you understand to be an American cookie, sure. like that goes really well mm. with coffee yeah. or chocolate, like yeah. the coffee chocolate combo for sure. Yeah. But it's like the oatness mm-hmm. is like no, I should be having English breakfast a, a tea with tea. this. Yeah, like, yeah, I can yeah. feel like that's what this was made to, for. Uh, to be fair, the only time, like, I I know people are going to come at me for this, but I don't really drink tea that much. Get them! If ever. Get them! Get them! Get them, folks! Em. Cancel Jasper! Yeah, uh, but what I will say is I will drink tea if I really want to dunk biscuits. Sure. I will, I will sit and eat a whole pack of biscuits and not drink any of the tea. Because by the end, I've had so many biscuits that the tea is gone. Oh, sure, of course. You know what I mean? I'll have drunk the tea via biscuits. <laughs> Like truly, you can get like really far down in the cup 
yeah. you know, like you'll you'll literally sit there eating, and then you're like, where did my cup of tea go? Like it's I'm these realizing are impressively absorbent. I'm realizing that that is also proper behavior that you mm. can do that yeah. because when we were at the pub yesterday there was we were <laughs> trying to figure out what to get and i was yeah. like oh do i want a fish and chips i really mm-hmm. do and we were talking about like an actual fish and chips place yeah. and then a little while a little way away <laughs> these three women in their 70s oh, yeah, 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 older, yeah, grand, older, grandmothers uh, truly uh, uh, older ladies yep yeah yeah got the the fish and chips and it was massive <laughs> the entire fish, fish was, was fried the fish and then we just battle. watched this woman put it away smash it she 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 destroyed it and then got dessert yeah and, and then she then, got like a big cake yep or like a or a tort or something yep so and I was they would like, have gone through like two or three bottles of wine easily 100 percent easily so I think that that we're encouraged to just keep dunking the biscuit yeah, and you just thing. keep dunking the biscuit until the tea's gone. I'm trying to understand the behavior. That's what I'm saying. Sure. But the Britishness, sure. I think, is even higher than the Guinness. I think this might be 13. Wow. Hobnob. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, Britishness. Hobnob, I think, is extremely British for sure. Uh, um, I'm also going to say a nine for the Hobnob because uh-huh. I do think that I'm missing something. By sure. Not sure, sure, sure. But that like last little one, I'll give you that. That's fine. Yeah. I think they do taste better when they're dunked. Sure, for sure, hundred percent. Just because it unlocks the chocolate a bit more. Oh yeah, because yeah, it's sure. like the, yeah, the, the meltedness of the chocolate is great and uh, enjoyment. <laughs> That this is happening. Uh, twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Okay, I'm gonna go twenty-eight. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, I got a nat twenty, so actually it's infinite. It's oh infinite, right. Yeah, it's, so... infinite, it's infinite success. Yeah. It's infinite enjoyment. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The DC was thirty, and I got a nat twenty. Well, I actually broke my mouth because I smiled so much. <laughs> so. So actually, I'm having so a better time. I'm actually, I'm actually in excruciating pain, but I'm having fun. <laughs> All right, and let me just finish some more. No, before. stop finishing the more. <laughs> it tastes bad. Every time you go back in, it's gonna taste worse. Every single time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it in your face now. It's like actively not enjoyable. <laughs> why did I, do that? I don't know why you did that. It's so bad, man. <laughs> it's so bad. It's not an enjoyable flavor, like not even remotely. I feel like just because you're watching me in person, I feel like I'm like trying to impress Jasper. <laughs> He, Jasper is doing nothing to egg me on. Absolutely. I'm just like, no, I'm like, oh, look at me. I'm actively I'm telling than, right. you not to do this. I'm actively saying to you, don't eat the do rest of do this. this. Don't do this. I don't want you to do this. It's not good yeah. for you. It's bad. I got to say, I'm I'm back to a four. I think I got it. I understood. Okay. Because it was like, oh, blue cheese. Like, I like stinky cheese. I don't have a problem with it. It is. The, I, okay. So for everyone listening who's not here and who's not tasting it, it is so far away from blue cheese. Blue cheese is a delicious little morsel to put on most but things. But imagine like spreading blue cheese like on a piece of toast. You yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine that exactly. And it tastes the opposite of that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Not even close. Maybe. Not even close. It's okay. to, uh, Marmite is vile. It's the devil sauce. <laughs> and don't forget it. Hey, it's Eric, and I brought everyone room temperature beer. Okay, I learned that they do, in fact, have cold beer in the United Kingdom, but I thought it was all room temperature, just like bitter you got in the poob, and that's on me. But I did enjoy the pub, and it was wild watching some, like, grandmothers put away a massive fish and chips plate. That was awesome. I really enjoyed that. It was wonderful that Amanda and I got to go to the UK to visit Jasper and do a live show. And that's all possible thank you to our Patreon. So please, if you want to vote with your dollars and support independent games media, especially one that doesn't uh, just cover news and cover something else, uh, contribute to the Patreon. Patreon.com slash games and feelings. Shout out to producer level patrons, Polly Burridge, Kelsey Duffy, and Peyton, who are very excited about Starfield, but in a low key way, like Bethesda is odd and it's going to take a while for them to iron out all of the kinks. And also they're probably going to have to download mods, but it's fine. It's Skyrim in space. It's going to be good. It is a great day to try another show here at the Multitude Podcast Collective. I think you'd like, tell me about it. A game show about proving the things you like are actually interesting and good. Hosted by Adel Rafai from Hello from the Magic Tavern and Hey Riddle Riddle and your very own Eric Silver. Adel is playing an eccentric billionaire who forces guests to come on the podcast to prove their favorite thing is interesting and cool. Through a series of wild games and challenges put together by me, guests are scored based on the quality of their answers or whatever Adel is feeling at this moment. Think of this like podcasting Taskmaster or an in-depth conversation about something your friend is into mixed with hunting humans for sport. 
We've had wonderful guests like Jenna Steber, Jeffrey Craner, Matt Young, Janet Varney, and more. And Jasper is going to be on very soon. Uh, new episodes every other Thursday. Tell me about it. It's the best podcast run by a multi-billionaire. We are sponsored this week by Ravensburger Jigsaw Puzzles. Enjoy in the timeless pleasure of assembling Ravensburger Extraordinary Jigsaw Puzzles. Ravensburger's premium quality puzzles are crafted with meticulous attention to detail, bringing you an unparalleled puzzle-solving experience. With a heritage dating back all the way to 1883, these puzzles have become an integral part of families' lives across generations. So share the joy of puzzling with family and friends, knowing your cherished puzzles will stand the test of time. Regardless of your preference or skill level, you'll find a puzzle that suits you perfectly, thanks to the wide range of imagery, themes, and piece counts available. Start small and work your way up to 40,000 piece puzzies. Are you up for the challenge? Shop Ravensburger in your local game store or on Amazon today. We are also sponsored by Elderwood Academy. They are a group of artists handmaking immersive and custom D&D accessories just for you. You might know them for their hex chest dice boxes or the spell book gaming box family. I have one that they sent me. It's really cool. It's like a little book that opens up and has like a secret compartment for all of your dice. It's very cool. They've been an innovating, creative, and artistic gaming accessory since 2014, and they are here to support the community. They want you to be happy in your gaming life, and therefore they support their items for life. If they're broken, just return them. If you're interested in this and you want to check them out, here's a little, little extra thing for you. Use code FEELINGS to get 10% off at elderwoodacademy.com. That is code FEELINGS for 10% off at elderwoodacademy.com. Now, back to the show. That woman last night was putting it away. It was she crazy. Really... That woman, that woman was like a slight grandmother. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. she was like also a little old person skinny. Honestly, like she was a slight woman. You should see my wife's my wife's grandma. It's impressive. She no. snacks all day, literally all day, every day. A t- tiny woman, tiny tiny woman. Hell yeah, just snacks all day every day. Jasper, I got some questions. We're gonna do some regular questions here. Jasper, do you think that my questions are going to be more harsh or less harsh because I'm in the UK? I hope they're more harsh. Right. Because I'm really taking on like... Because we're in person as well, I feel like we can really get into it. Yeah. And um, we can tell more people to, you know, make really big life choices. Like yeah, we did for sure. Re- for sure. Recently. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, we I've been watching uh, Sky Sports with you hey, all morning. You have, yeah. Yeah. And it's just like really calming watching people like talk... <laughs> oh, no, it's the Marmite. <laughs> Leave that in. Leave that in. Don't be a coward. We should leave it in. <laughs> that was incredible. That was like an instant snap. I'm like, it's the marmite. It's the marmite. You got me. <laughs> it's been really calming watching people just like really chill. Talk mm. about like, oh, this person's going here. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're going to go watch a press conference. So it's it's, great. It is very, very different to when you're in America. And it's like, coming up on CBS Sports. <laughs> well, now that like the American... Fly over and it's like, a, you know, it's big. Yeah. Well, you know, American sports media are now so in bed with gambling mm. that it's just like... It was also funny just like seeing how prevalent gambling is everywhere. Oh, yeah. But it's like, un- it's like no one cares. It's mm. like so enmeshed into the DNA. Like now, of course, as Americans, we're trying to make tons of money on it. And now our sports media is ruined. Mm. Like ESPN did a deal with a sports, like an online casino. And right. they're branding their casino, the new casino app, as ESPN Bet. Right. So uh, over here, we do have some regulation that we're not allowed. I don't think you're, they're allowed to have it within coverage. So yeah, we they could can use sponsor, that. That would be nice. They can sponsor teams and they can uh, be like buy ad slots. Like most ads right after like a the like a break in football mm. will be an ad, like a betting ad, but they can't like Sky Sports won't do like a hey we, this is brought to you by Brett three six five. Do you know what I mean? Like they won't yeah. like announce it on the program. Like but, I don't think they're allowed yeah. to sponsor like that, if that makes sense. Well now the content revolves around sports betting. And yeah. it's just ridiculous. It's like, oh here's what the line is it's like I don't care. That's, actually, that's something I actually found quite jarring in the States was because I remember being like it was like the, the commentators and stuff would say stuff like well, that's the, changed. The, that's odds been recent. Are, the odds are like two to one on so and so 
to get a touchdown in the third quarter or whatever. Like that, I found was like, that's like, that never happens in football. But that's also partly because we've had such a history, like a long history of like really bad, like gambling in sports that yeah. like, we've got to a point where it's like, no, we really need to pull back on this, guys, because people are like really ruining that. Like a lot of people are ruining their lives. So yeah. we need to, you know, we, we can't be actively telling people what the prices are right now. Like that's bad. No, that would be great. And I am so happy that it's not just like yelling arguments and telling you about sports lines. Yeah. Uh, so I have a sports questions for you though. Please. This is questions. wonderful because all we've been doing is watching guys get shuffled around mm-hmm. the country for enormous amounts of money yeah. or like sent to Germany for like two mm-hmm. seconds and then they come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is something that, we don't deal with as much in American sports, but maybe we should because mm-hmm. it's, it's, we have to struggle with so, things like this. Sure. So this is from Separation Anxiety. She Hello. heard, I love the Philadelphia Phillies starting center fielder, Brandon Marsh. He's mm-hmm. my favorite player. He dumps h- double bubble on people when they hit walk off home runs, pours gum on them, I think, because, you know, baseball players love gum. He has a big beard. His hair is always wet for some reason. He's nice. the best. Good, good. <laughs> that was all the question. <laughs> nice. Yeah, 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 of course. As the MLB trade deadline comes and goes, I know my beloved Brandon Marsh will not be leaving the city of Brandon Marshall. <laughs> I'm not going to read that. <laughs> Hold on, let me say that again. What? I need As to the know city of Brandon Marshall love is what they wrote in. <laughs> So he's not going to leave the Phillies. This year. Right. Okay. I, but I know one day in the next several years, he's likely to depart for less gritty pastures. <laughs> this is the most Philly question Incredible. I've ever seen. How do you cope when your favorite athlete gets traded away from your favorite team? Fascinating. So this is completely different in the US. Okay. So younger people within the UK uh, now will like be able to like support across teams. You are allowed yes, that's the to same. Con- I will say just to, to mm-hmm. cut this off of the past, American young people do the same thing. Okay, they cool. they've have favorite players much less than they, they have, have favorite, favorite teams. teams yeah. I wouldn't say it's, it's like, I'd still say it's still a very team based game, but like more so what one caveat I will say is it's less frowned upon if they move abroad. But you still have to hate them when your team plays them in like the Champions League or something. Right. right? So if they move to like a team in Europe, then it's like more like, okay, well, I can I can kind of still like them. However, I will say this. In the UK, if they move anywhere remotely close to a rival, they are dead to you and you hate them. Anything nice about them that you have said in the past, you now immediately retract and you feel ashamed <laughs> for having said it. Yeah. That person is the sc- scum of the earth yeah. now, purely because they have moved for a team. Even if they bought in a hundred plus million pounds to your club for in a transfer fee and actually that transfer fee is going to go on spending on buying even better players doesn't matter just to clarify transfer fees is that you can just pay a lot of money to have another guy and yeah. it goes from team to team well you basically you buy their contract like you buy the, you buy the you buy the contract uh, from that. a different team but you hate them you absolutely for sure loathe them the worst one i know of uh shout out to the one spurs fan that i know uh <laughs> listens to this oh the guy brian from queens <laughs> brian from queens shout out to brian from queens um you know the, the worst one was uh, there's this guy called adam by all. Uh, he ended up going to Spurs at one point. He was like a no. player for us. He, in one match, he trod on one of our players, like on purpose, okay. like injuring him, then scored a goal Hell around yeah. the entire length of the pitch and celebrated in front of our fans. Hell yeah, that's pretty cool. You, <laughs> Wait, that's cool as hell. No, it's not. That's awesome. No, I, Objectively, can you see that's can, hilarious? No, 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 no. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. <laughs> Go I in, Poets, am a, bit. I am a calm and collected person, generally. <laughs> I would have can turn that man inside out. Sure. In like I was angry. Like I should. I shouldn't be. You would have been. No you one, were one of those hooligans. I've oh, heard so I much went. About. I was foaming at the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I shouldn't have been. I like you know. I. I. It was. It. It was embarrassing how angry sure. I was in that moment. But that guy. Oof, he pushed buttons, man. Yeah. He pushed buttons that should not have been pressed. Yeah. You should see the clips of the Arsenal fans in the, the, the like, in like you know, it's like a shot from behind him just looking at the Arsenal fans. Yeah. And the rage. I mean, so, oh, many, sure. so many red men. So <laughs> many red men. Just red men. Jasper, imagine we're watching like a sports documentary and they filmed you and be like, this is the problem with football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, proper it's British citizens. <laughs> like just making some obscene face. Yeah. Uh, so you're saying hate them. You're hate just going to have to. Hate them. Unless they go somewhere that is actively not a threat to your team. 
Sure. And therefore it's like, well, okay, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. For baseball, that would be like, so you know how baseball split with American yeah. League and National League? Yeah. You really don't end up playing the other league all that much unless exactly. like the schedule puts you in a so certain So that's thing. fine. So yeah, as long as you're not in a rival, I think you're okay to still like them. Yeah. But you're just not going to like them as much. I no. think the thing that you are hitting on, who's someone who's obviously from Philadelphia, yeah. is that once you don't see him 162 games a year, you're going to like him a lot less. These cute <sighs> things he does, Sorry. he's going to do like in in um, hmm. St. Lewis yeah. or he's going to do in Seattle and yeah. you're not going to care. Yeah. And I think they like just have your time and mourn when he leaves, but mm-hmm. then it's just going to kind of fade away. Yeah. And that's something you're just going to have to deal with. Like yeah. I really, the only thing I would say, because baseball is um, stupid and Americans are ridiculous is that uh, I remember once this guy named Johnny Damon got traded from the Red Sox to the Yankees. Okay. And you know that the Red Sox and the yep. Yankees are yeah, right. Yeah. So first yeah, yeah, yeah. one strike against him, right? Yeah. The thing, pretty, sounds like a pretty big strike as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's the dominating thing. Like yeah. for like Ben Affleck would not wear a Yankees hat on the set yes, of Gone Girl, I and it held up production. Yes, because the did d- this. Uh, who am I thinking of? The director that Gone Girl. Oh, Fincher. Fincher was was like adamant because he, he showed because he he thought that was commit that was like characterization yeah. that he was a Yankees yeah. fan. Yeah, and Ben Affleck just wouldn't do it, which yeah. is hilarious. So okay, so the thing about the Yankees because and this is the ridiculous part is that they don't allow players to look unkempt like they need to get a haircut and they need to have like no be they can't have a beard maybe well, they can have a mustache but it has to be like really sure, trim. he's like, ridiculous trim, i want to say trim, it's very trim, ridiculous trim. Okay. the yankees are terrible uh let's go mets <laughs> the yankees are terrible right so johnny damon looked like a caveman mm-hmm. long hair mm-hmm. i think he had some sort of beard at the time mm-hmm. and they made him cut his hair and he did it because he's like, yeah, I'm on the Yankees. I got to do what they do. And then he looked like a different guy. And he's like, who is this guy who we loved so much? Yeah, yeah, And then, yeah. then he Cave just Man became totally his, different. Yeah. So I think that when they end up joining another team, they also take on the vibe of the team. Yeah. Because of the Phillies and because this is the land of the Philadelphia fanatic mm-hmm. <laughs> and of gritty mm-hmm. as referenced in the question. Uh-huh. Philly players, you just get like a, cr- a little crush on them because they're like your scummy <laughs> older brother's bo- <laughs> friend who you have a crush on. Right? Love and it. I think that the vibe yeah. Brandon, you like Brandon Marsh because he's a Philly. Yeah. Just as much as because he's your hometown team. Yeah. I think I can say this for a lot of different teams that have vibes. Yes. And then he'll lose that vibe if he goes somewhere else. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. The clubs definitely have vibes in England. And like there are times where like a player will go to a team and I'll go, Oh yeah. That makes sense. They like, fit. They <laughs> like fit. oh, that's a fit. That's yeah. a fit. Like, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I feel like this is also true for, like, the Lakers in the other way. It's sure. like when I, as a Boston Celtics fan, feel like people go to the Lakers, I'm like, yeah, of course you would. Of course you do. Yeah, you want to be a Laker. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh. God, you want to, yeah. like, celebrate Kobe and all yeah. and have yeah. Magic Johnson give you a high five. Like, yeah, that's yeah, what you yeah. want, right? Yeah, like I felt that way when Anthony Davis joined the Lakers when LeBron like made him come over. Right. Do you know who that is? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, I know who that is. And he, he has a big unibrow and he's yeah, really tall yeah. and he gets injured all the time. Mm-hmm. He's like, you're, so, he's like, he gets injured all the time and he's like, kind of like, he's very passive as a person. <laughs> like he's fine with LeBron telling him what to what do. To do? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, of course you'd Obviously. go just to like chase Obviously. a ring and say you're a Laker. <laughs> like, of course you would. So I think that you just enjoy your time. Don't worry about it. But when it happens, I think. Once the initial sting wears off, yeah. you're going to be fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. Hell yeah. Sports. Sports. I love them. This is a really good question, which mm-hmm. I think is really fun. This is from Card Counter-in-Law. Card Counter-in-Law. Card okay. Counter-in-Law. This is uh, she, they. Okay. Uh, hey, you. how do you feel about your in-laws? I love my in-laws. Yeah. I, re- I think I got very lucky with my in-laws, though. Like, my in-laws are like, they, they are like the most welcoming warm-hearted people in the world like it was like a pretty like high bar for like getting into the family for like them being like oh no no accepting like, you yeah. accepting but, but that's because like once you're in you're in yeah. you know what i and mean jay dated that's, messy before yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's jay, also jay. a problem <laughs> <laughs> is that the the standard that had been set by jade's ex was just, by leo Me- by leo, leo messi, messi. <laughs> um <laughs> Was just so high. Oh, that was Marmite. I thought it was good. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I knew. No, I thought it was hot. I, I genuinely thought you knew that was Marmite. No. I was about, I was going to say something, but I was like, it's, it's fine. He knows what it is. Amanda put out three strawberries for me to eat to get the taste out of my mouth. And I've eaten all three. You've eaten all three of them, which is absolutely hilarious to me. Um, 
So yeah, no, I love my in-laws. They they uh they're incredibly welcoming and uh very generous and they would do anything for you. So I love them very very much. Yeah, very very much. And I love nothing more than winding up my mother-in-law. Oh hell yeah! Like it's and she, just, she's about that. Yeah. Well, no, she's absolutely not. But like, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you know, putting an ice cube down her back or whatever. Oh, you know wow. what I mean? Like just like little little you know jumping out and scaring her. <laughs> Um, I can't tell if you're joking or no, not. I don't know fully. I That's genuinely love. Wild. I genuinely love doing this. Um, and like, it's got to a point where when I'm there, I think she she's on guard. got alert. She's on a, on alert. A okay. Bit. Um, it doesn't also help that Jade's niece finds it hilarious when I do this. Oh, to my okay, mother-in-law. that makes sense. So you know what I mean? So like, she then gets involved and will help lure my mother-in-law yeah. to like an area so that I can either jump out and scare her or turn the garden hose on her or sure. something like that. I appreciate that the niece is involved because oh, if yeah. you were just like yeah. doing this to the mother-in-law, it would have been a lot. Oh, I do it anyway. <laughs> but it's just funnier <laughs> when the niece is there. <laughs> oh my God. Incredible. Okay, so then you'll you'll be very good at answering okay, this okay, question. Okay, okay. I also like Amanda's family yeah. as well. <laughs> just I just need to just say I was not I was not just going to move on. It was just I was asking a question to my to my perpetual guest. I'm just clarifying. All right, this is from Carb Counter in Law. My partner and I have been dating for nearly a year now. Okay. And I'm be visiting their family for an extended visit soon. Mm-hmm. They are game people, all caps. They spend all their family time playing games together. They love board games, video games, drinking games, and most of all, card games. Okay. They all know how to count cards. That's wild. Let's take a pause. That's wild. Okay, so family bonding time with them all learning how to count cards. Apparently. Wow. And they're remarkably good at games like poker and gin rummy. I, however, am pretty fucking average in these games. Oh, this is tough. I am terrified to spend a week in their home getting my ass kicked by his whole family. What if they think I'm a silly goose in a bad way because I'm not a card wizard? I just learned how to shuffle. Send help. Whoa, this is, this is tough. Like that is, (laughs) this is effectively like the, the sporting equivalent of like rocking up at your new in-laws house and turns out like three of your partner's cousins were like in the NBA. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm being like, and they're like, let's go play some ball. And you're like, holy sh, I am, I am so inadequate at this. Like, like I'm. Okay, first of all, I feel incredibly sorry for you. This is tough. It's tough. This is tough. This is a tough situation. <laughs> this is the part where we is, tell you this is a real is, problem. This is a real problem because you have no chance of winning. Like, yeah. zero chance. Like, if you win a hand, it's because they let you win a hand. Yeah, you know, 100%. You know what I mean? If they can all count cards, you are screwed. There's nothing you can do. The yeah. one thing that I would... So, there's two ways you can go about this in my head. You either embrace this, you let it be a little bit like, hey, I'm a silly goose and I like to play games and I don't mind losing and <laughs> embrace that as a part of your personality. I thought we were playing Go Fish. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, is yeah, 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 this? exactly. All yeah. of that. Like you just ham it up, you go crazy and maybe, 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 maybe you bring over a game or two that you're all really good at that's not a card game. That's that's an option, right? So you're like, okay, I can exact a little bit of revenge here. Or here's the other option. This is a long-term game. <laughs> You get real good at poker. <laughs> I'm talking. You spend actual American English, whatever, whatever currency of wherever you are. Based, Buy a book. <laughs> you get a book. You get a tutor online. You get good. Like not just like I'm talking. You invest yeah. time and money, and you get so good. But you don't cotton on. You don't let them know that you're doing no. this for years. I'm talking. You play the long game, like ten years into the future, where you silly goose it up, and then one day you just switch on these guys. You just absolutely switch and you suddenly are winning every hand you are taking them to pieces and you flip the table at the end you take all of their money and you ride off into the sunset just master class it just absolutely Chris money like, maker it, it, like you make them cry that's you know impressive. what i mean that's like those are the two options <laughs> One, so run the long game or be a silly goose. Those be a silly ideas. goose. Yeah, yeah. Because I think, yeah. and I will, the genuine part of advice here is like, I don't think there's anything wrong with being the silly goose. No. I think that like, if they're like in any way normal people, which I'll be honest, maybe, maybe they're, they're not. not. Maybe, maybe they're, they're not. not. Like, they all know how to count, yeah. count, count cards. If they're shitty that's, to you about yeah, 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 this, yeah, yeah. then that's you have a problem. Saying. Then you have a problem. But I think if they're, if they're just like relatively normal, like this is just something their family knows how to do, yeah. then like I absolutely think that being and playing the role of the silly goose is a very valid strategy. Just embrace the, the fact that you're never going to win a game of cards. But maybe you'll win at like another card game or another, sorry, another like board game or something. Yeah, let me, let's run down that 
thing because I think that that's it. I think that's the road you go down. Yeah. Do seed card games, seed card games. Yeah. Them, right. But you made a list. You said they love board games, video games, and drinking games, but card games is their favorite thing. Sure. I'm sure, question asker, card counter in law, that you are good at one of those three other things. Oh, I've got a great idea. Just drink them under the table. Of, yeah, yes. Drink, just get like get real get like an ironclad constitution yeah. by just drinking all the time. Or just get really good at throwing a ping pong ball into a cup. Boom. That's you can train Boom. on that. You really could train on that. So choose one of the other categories here and just get really good at that. You yeah. can also board games because there's so many board games. Yeah. Bring a game that you're really good at you can and then beat easily, them at it. You can because then they'll them. see they will let you be a silly goose at cards if yep. you are the best at board games. Yeah. And I think that you probably are. Mm. And I bet you could do it. Almost certainly. Like, like especially because there'll be there'll be a lot of board games that are so like like such the opposite of of like playing cards where like the strategy isn't to like to win or it's like whatever like the, the, yeah. there'll be like a different very different type of strategy which they won't be able to employ their like logical card county brains. And cheat. And they and will be cheat and cheat. A, yeah, because yeah, also <laughs> let's clarify card counting is cheating. They, it, <laughs> if if you can get thrown out on your ass yes. by in Vegas for it. Then it's, then cheating. it's cheating. It's cheating. It's cheating. It's hundred percent cheating. Well, it's cheating because the, the really rich people won't win. Which you but know, I also think it. it's cheating. It definitely it's definitely cheating. cheating. It's definitely just cheating. Yeah. It's also definitely just cheating. I want to clarify. I don't mind people who count cards in Vegas because like who cares? The casino doesn't need more money. Yeah. You know what I mean? But card counting at home Card like counting at home game? is crazy. That's like cooking your dice in D&D. &D. That's yeah. like rolling and being like, oh, it's a nat 20. Also, if you're counting cards, you're playing blackjack at home? Yeah. Right? That's what the only thing you can really use it for, right? Yeah. Wild. I just want to clarify. I think that you can, I think it's like if you're insanely good, you can do but it. But primarily, right? you should be, you're counting cards at blackjack. Yeah. If I remember from I think, the yeah, 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 from yeah. the hit book and movie twenty one, that's what you use it for. Yeah, I think so. So, I, playing blackjack at home is crazy to me. And also, is uh, the huge caveat that we well, like we might need some clarification on is like, are you playing for money? Probably. If so, I'm gonna go with probably. Wild. Yeah. Like. If anything over five bucks is obscene. I'm sure they're playing for more than that. Like, Come yeah, on, no, you know. No, no, no. I know they are. I know they are. But what I'm telling you right now is that, like, there's no universe in which I walk into a room full of people who I know can count cards, okay. and I bet anything more than five pounds. Mom, <laughs> Dad, I want you to meet. I want you to meet my partner. This is Question Asker. This is my mom, Minnesota Fats. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And both of the, like, Mom and Dad have both got those, like, what, those, like, visors? The, uh, the green visors, you know what I mean? And they're smoking, like, chain smoking the whole time. And they're just sat there, like, playing. Playing cards by themselves. This is my dad, but you can call you can call him the Cincinnati kid. <laughs> <laughs> the Cincinnati kid. <laughs> they like and, then, and like he he throws a card like and it sticks in the wall like next to you yeah. and makes it like yeah. kind of noise. It's like oh that's our Wi Fi password. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just log in whenever you can. We're so happy to have you in our I'm home. So happy. He's really nice. It's just like a super aggressive yeah. first move. Just to we make always, sure we you always know have breakfast are. at nine on the river. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> we always double down on 11s in this family that's always all you need to know and treat my son with respect that's yeah that's the only scenario where i'm really worried is that they start like you'll do a move like in poker or something you're like you'll bet and like they'll start being like oh, okay that's weird uh, if, like, if that's shitty. Like, like i just really hope that they're not doing that like as, if, as long as they're gracious with the superpower that they possess yeah. fine you know what i mean like if i again like to use the the basketball analogy like if i went around to my in-laws and there was these like six foot eight giants yeah. that I was up against and they're there bodying me out of the way. <laughs> That's you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, whilst I'm trying to get like a dribble, like it, the, the, the nicer version of this is that these six foot seven giant cousins are there like lifting me up to let yes. me dunk. You know what I mean? That's great. That's what these, these people, they should be doing. The and professor I from the and one mixtape is juking you out of your shoes. <laughs> Be like mm, first broken ankle in this family. Yep. Everyone has to Everyone do it. Has Happened to me when I was three. Imagine. I remember. Yeah, you need to actually keep breaking them until they become hyperextended, and then that way you don't get uh, ankle sprains anymore. Oh, that's the move. That happens. <laughs> you have really strong ankles. That's it. You need to have really strong or really loose ankles. So oh, is what gotta happens. have loose ankles. It's how Messi made his career. Oh, he's and got you know real. That? And Jay told you that. Yeah, because she dated him. Because they were together. For yeah, a long I don't time. want to talk about Messi's loose ankles. Actually, <laughs> I just. I just remembered it. Bring back, bring back some rules. Messi's loose ankles sounds like a like a 
the username online and you're like, oh, I don't want to play That's this guy. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, like I don't, that. I don't, I don't He's going to say guy. slurs. Yeah, I'm not for sure. <laughs> Do you know what the funniest thing actually that you bring up uh, my wife and Messi is that I very much remember watching one of the first ever football games we, we watched. Jay was just like sat on her phone not really paying attention mm. and um, the uh, the commentator went, She was card card She was card counting. She was count card counting. Yeah, yeah, she was yeah, card yeah. counting. And, um, and the, the, the commentator went, it's Messi. And she was like, it's not very nice. <laughs> Like very, <laughs> very earnestly, very earnestly. Yeah, that's a pretty mean thing to say about someone. Kind of mean, like well, okay, like that doesn't seem like a constructive criticism of that player's ability. And I was like, no, 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 that's 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 the greatest player of all time. Um, He's messy because that's his name. That's his name. It's like, well, why did you give him that name? I mean, you should give him positive reinforcement instead of nicknames, yeah, cruel yeah. nicknames. Yeah, well, it's his surname, so <laughs> you know he can't change that. Uh, and it's spelled with an I, not a Y, so it's fine. It's something different. It's like something very different. Do we have another? It's so fun. Do you have another question so we can move on? Do you from want my, another one? From my wife's ex. <laughs> I wow, Jasper really wants to end the episode, so I guess we have to yeah, end yeah, the if episode. We, if we could just go right now. Yeah, I need, wait, to, okay, I, I, um, need to, I need to go. And sorry, I shouldn't have brought up your I'm wife's gonna get, ex. I'm going to get on a plane to Miami <laughs> real quick. <laughs> I need to have a word with my wife's ex. Sorry, I have to go talk to my wife's ex and say that he's <laughs> that his uh, ankles are too loose. So yeah. I think that's gross. And he actually has firm ankles. <laughs> They're actually, loose and firm. He finds it's it like really, marmite. He actually finds it really offensive when you say he has firm ankles. <laughs> it's like kind of like the feast of marmite. Is that he has loose and firm ankles? He has loose and firm ankles at the same time. Yeah, for sure. Cool okay, stuff. so I guess we have to uh, we have to end the podcast. Well, no, um, I was asking for another question, but you can end the podcast if you want to. That's no, I mean you're just giving me a lot of weird energy right now because right, okay, I've been talking about your wife. The one that brought up my wife's ex. Well, I mean, I didn't. Well, then you did. It shouldn't be all over Wikipedia page. Jade's Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the main thing. I actually think it. that's Jane's, uh, I think that's my wife's worst nightmare. Having a Wikipedia Having page. Having a Wikipedia page. <laughs> like, truly, she wants to be perceived zero. Like, sure. do you know what I mean? Like, she hates being, the idea of being perceived. Yeah. Like, any, like the public. Mm. You know what I mean? So I think the idea of her having a Wikipedia page is like, actually, yeah. would, would actually physically repulse her. Now, what else? Which is fair enough. What if, like, we can do this compromise? She has a Wikipedia page, but it's filled with nonsense that we've said on Games and oh, Feelings only. Word. It's yeah, just, it's maybe. all wrong, the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's, like, a, now a link to her on Lionel Messi's <laughs> Wikipedia page. Lionel Messi personal life. <laughs> personal life spouse. <laughs> For, for two, former two, partner. Yeah, two, 2000, like, 19 to 2021. <laughs> Jasper starts applying to, like, get a Wikipedia page and be like, hey, are there any pages you're linked in? It's like, yeah, um, I'm Lionel part of, Messi. like, I'm part of Messi's <laughs> page. Is that, yeah. is that Jade? Is yeah, my yeah, wife? Yeah. And then she's... I like, would you know, like, genuinely do all of this if it means I could get a mention on Lionel Messi. Messi's Imagine that's actually so in personal life, it's like Lionel Messi used to date Jade, who's now who's now, who's now married to Jasper Leo Carter. Yes, exactly. And that's, that's how you get your Wikipedia page. That's perfect. That's actually perfect. <laughs> to be mentioned on Lionel Messi's Wikipedia page might be the greatest achievement I could ever achieve. Look, I mean, we have it in. Truly. It's great. Truly. This is on recorded. We've we've made the we've media, made it into, and now we just link to you know, link wait to this to episode. We just gotta wait for someone to make it. Yeah, is it Jasper Card right? Card counter. I swear, <laughs> if I go on Little Messi's Wikipedia page at any point to see my name, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> I mean, we can do it, but someone It'll will be, change it. That's what I mean. It'll be there for three seconds. <laughs> yeah. Now, Jasper, I don't know if it's all the marmite, but it's all going to my head. It really. <laughs> and has. the fact that I slept twelve hours you, last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. I'm look a little refreshed loopy. though, which is nice. I'm like, I'm refreshed. It's like you get out of a hyperbaric chamber, and you're mm. like, hey, is it still 19? 55. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, how yeah. I feel. You've been deprived of all of your senses for 12 hours. Yeah, exactly. Like, and now they're all like waking up at the same time, like, <laughs> so, many, so much stimulus. Also, I've been seeing Mom you. <laughs> I've been seeing you take the piss out of me in person and continuously. Yeah. So I'm really getting used to it. Here's it was, the thing that Jasper does: is that all he does is slightly change the tone of its voice, <laughs> and he just speaks. But he speaks exactly the same way and says something that makes him sound so offended. <laughs> He's like, "Wow, I can't believe you would say that about me." That's you say that all the time. This actually feels kind of rude. See, it's like that. <laughs> That's what it is. You don't change. You change the inflection of your voice slightly, and then you just say something. Say salty, something else. salty is what we do. It's what we do. Uh, well, Jasper is really. He's giving me the like. Stop. Let's stop recording. I'm really mad at you. Sign because I. No, no, no. You'll know when I'm really mad at you. Oh well, I I could tell because you're holding up uh, a weapon of mm -hmm. it that I can't say what it is. Yeah, of course you can't. No, I can't. No. Uh, because that would be rude. That's why uh, I held in up. your house? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So I think we could just we'll just end because you have no power here. No, I don't. So I just have to do what you say because because um, well, you're holding up a weapon. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I'm placing my hand back on your shoulder. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and you're trying to give me more Marmite. So I think we have to end the podcast. I'm just going to start spooning Marmite into Eric's mouth. Hell yeah. Uh, Jasper, where, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. Can I? Oh, I can say something for real. Uh-huh. Hey, if you're going to be going to Big Bad Con, Woo! which is coming up at the end of September... Uh, you should come see me and Jasper there. We're going to be there together. Woo! We're going to yeah. hang out. It's going to be great. We are going. There's some... Uh, Big Bad Con is absolutely incredible. I went last year. I can't tell you how much I would recommend uh, going if you're even remotely or tangentially interested in getting into, you know, games, TTRPGs, mm. uh, streaming, content creation, whatever it is. Like, this is literally, is like the place to be. It's such a wonderful place filled with so many, like, minority groups as well. They do such a great job of, uh, like, impact empowering minority groups to be and like help they help people get there it was like a genuinely like transcendent experience last year i absolutely adored it and i'm very excited to be there with even more of my friends this time it's going to be amazing eric's going uh i think i, I know gabe hicks is going to be there yeah. and gonna drag a bria probably so that'll be uh, fun yeah i know be, and i'm gonna be, be like fun. hi i'm i'm jasper's friend hi. eric hi. Do you want, can i come over to like dungeons and dragons too <laughs> yeah you do, do talk to me <laughs> it's gonna be great yes. uh, but that's gonna be really fun we're not we are trying to get on panels and stuff so we're still figuring that out but it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah i know i've been so relaxed about getting on panels i like i really message people like, hey what are, we, hey, what are you doing can i be it's on also, it? it's also like the thing is what's so nice about it is like just you could like drifting into panels hearing cool people but then also like everyone's just mixing because it's not like a normal convention where it's like unless you go to someone's panel you won't see them because oh, it's sure. so dispersed yeah it's like truly it's like everything's on the same floor everyone's oh, nice. ha- everyone hangs out in, like the same area everyone nice. hangs out at the same bar everyone just sits around plays like magic or werewolf or Hell whatever yeah. do you know what i mean like it's so easy to see people you don't like need to do panels in the same way that you might do at like other conventions to like mix with cool. people you know what i mean no that'll be so, fun um i'm stoked as hell hell yeah dude. And i'm gonna bring all the marmite D- oh please you're only allowed to eat marmite while you're there no now no yep. one's gonna like me because i'm gonna smell like foot you are gonna smell and, like and, and armpit <laughs> yep yep so that's at the end of september in san francisco Woo! coming out it'll be great um you can find us on the internet doing all that stuff yeah you can yeah yeah do you well where do you are where are you on the internet uh, got quite right. okay and uh, I'm a tech guy, Eric. So. That's your name if you literally live in a You can follow me on TikTok. It's really, I'm having a really good time over there. I, should, a, I need to make some TikToks, some a, British TikToks. Oh, yeah, you for sure you need to. Yeah. Also, I've just the, been sleeping for 12 hours, so I haven't <laughs> had the time to do it. I've slept for 12 days, so. Uh, I slept through my entire trip, so actually, I don't I need to. Anything. I actually need to. I did record you, though, so there's loads of stuff for TikTok. Oh, that's good. I'll just put it on sleeping. the Games and Feelings Patreon for yeah, sure. Perfect. Uh, Jasper, Oibrov, having a lot of fun. This is great. Vila. Yeah, Vila. And uh, hey, Jasper, remember, there's mm. nothing in the instruction manual about feelings. Oh, look, I found something. It's right here. Oh, what does it say? It says, uh, Q. <laughs> Games and Feelings is produced by Eric Silver and edited and mixed by Misha Stanley. The theme music is Return to French Toast Castle by Jeff Bryce, and the art was created by Jessica Boyd. Find transcripts for this episode and all episodes at our website, gamesandfeelings.com. Until next time, press X to enjoy the podcast.